Welcome back to Rush the Wash. This is Miguel over here. Today's video, I want to show you how to paint Imperial troops. And the idea was to fulfill the wish of one of the followers that wanted to see how to paint these for his hero quest. But this tutorial is applicable for those of you who still play Middle Hammer with your Empire armies or even Age of Sigmar with the Cities of Sigmar supplement for the free guild troops. So on this tutorial I'm gonna paint the Empire troops according to the state colors that some of the followers of the channel actually decided to vote on. And if you are interested in learning how to paint Imperial troops, this is a great video for you. You can poach a lot of ideas both for your Age of Sigmar, Middle Hammer or Hero Quest miniatures if you have these. The Empire army has been in Warhammer Fantasy existing since the late days of 3rd edition and it has been a quintessential part of the background for that setting. In Age of Sigmar, nowadays we have the Cities of Sigmar book and we can find these troops mingling with other races in there. But the miniatures that I'm going to paint today are 3D prints of the original copies that were implemented in Hero Quest in the Advanced Quest version and also in Wizards of Morkar, one of the expansions that Hero Quest had. These guys were expected to help the heroes deal with the minions of Morkar, or Sargon, depending on whatever version you play, and they could be armed with several options. I got one of each to paint today, and I'm going to enjoy showing you how to do this for the four states that my followers chose in the poll that I put on my YouTube channel. If you ever want to choose one of the color schemes that I might put up forward, Please make sure that you follow, subscribe to the channel, and we can get this going on. Let's go! The first thing that you have to do if you're gonna rush the wash is paint your miniatures in white. White primer is usually the best option to do any kind of ink or wash painting. And then I'm gonna paint the metals first because I know this is going to stain other parts of the miniature when I'm doing that. I usually use just yes, iron breakers and Gehenna's gold but any kind of mid-tone silver color and a nice rich gold color will do the same. Just paint these areas as I'm showing you and you're ready to go. My followers chose Ostermark first of all and I think it's a very good choice. The combination between yellow and purple is a great choice. They always seem very striking colors together and the Imperial troops love having these colorful pajamas. We're gonna start with this color over here, which is Volupus Pink, and we're gonna paint two of the areas of the uniform with that. I usually paint in different parts of the uniform, like top left and bottom right, or top right and bottom left, but any combination is up to you. Using Griff Charger Grey, I'm gonna paint this type of shoes called Cow Mouth. Yes, that's the name that they have. And I'm gonna do so because I know these are shoes, and there is a very common mistake that I've seen a lot of people doing, and it's actually painting these as if they were barefoot. The skull might tell you, or you might read it as toes, but those are actually the kind of shoes that these people, the landscanets from Warhammer Fantasy, are wearing. Gnome oil is going to be used to darken all the metallic parts with the exception of the gold, and also those parts that I painted before with Griff Charlie Grey. And with Magos Purple, I am going to give another coat on the purple uniform in order to make it look much deeper than only with the Volubus Pink. Recently I started using the Citadel Air Colors and I'm going to use Cici's Moon, yellow clear, in order to paint the part of the uniform that is yellow. The idea behind this is that this is very similar to the now discontinued Lamenter's Yellow and it's gonna give a nice coat that is not very strong and is gonna be the foundation for further layering later. With pure white, now I'm painting socks, leaving a little bit, a little bit of that Griff Charger Grey in between, so it makes a little bit of shading. And also I'm going to clean all the ribbons and all the areas that I have stained with other colors now, so I'm going to make it look clean. Pyroclastic Orange Clear, another air color, is going to be the base for all the ribbons that I want to paint red. And well, you can choose any color because this is the background that the state troops had back then, that they are identified by these kind of ribbons, even though they have the same uniform. And let's say that this particular trooper is in a regiment which has red ribbons. With Flesh Terrace Red, I'm gonna paint over the orange now, and as you can see, we are obtaining a very strong and vibrant red with that. 
Cassandra Yellow is going to be used to darken that previous layer that we did with Sigis Sigismund. Sigismund. My god, that freaking name, I hate it. Uh, Sigismund Yellow. And with Seraphine Sepia, I'm going to give a coat to the armor. I'm not very pleased. I thought known oil will be enough, but you know what? I think a little bit of this sepia is going to improve the look overall. I am also going to paint the skin, the areas where they are shading and I'm also going to paint the halberd shaft. I'm going back to white scar to highlight the areas in the flesh that I want to make sure that they are going to be highlighted later on and as you can see is the top of the cheeks, the bridge of the nose and the nose itself, the upper lip and the chin. We're going to leave the areas beneath the cheekbones probably a little bit darker than the other area and also the eyes and the lips are gonna be left alone. Because this is the first miniature, I usually go back and forth cleaning things. Use Iron Breaker to highlight the armor and make it look a little bit cleaner. You will see now that I'm going to use Ether Matic Blue to paint the handle and the plume. This, I think, is absolutely irrelevant. I will not do that again. Believe me, it's a waste of time. Later on, I'm going to paint both the handle and the plume with Mortarian Green and follow up with Orc Flesh. So this is optional. If you want to do it, go ahead, be my guest. And paint now the flesh with Gilliman Flesh, both the hands and the face. Gore Grant of Fur. This is a dark brown contrast color that I'm going to use to give an extra shade on that gold part that I have in here and also to paint the grain of the wood in the halberd. As you can see, it takes a little bit of practice, just a little bit of skill. It's not very difficult, but you have to have a good pulse to do that. I'm also darkening a few parts on the face, like under the cheekbones and the eye sockets and the yellow uniform and some areas of the armor i'm gonna give it a little bit of that in order to make it look much more interesting with basilican and gray i'm going to paint the shoes the belt and also the straps from the armor here and there and as you can see i'm also retouching a little bit some of the metals the chainmail basically because of the texture that it has and the blade of the halberd just painting inside those areas. I'm highlighting again with pure white the cheekbones, the nose and the upper lip as well as the chin which I'm going to glaze later on with a different flesh color. In these cuts I'm very carefully picking up those with pure white as well. I'm gonna use now dark oat flesh with a glaze which means that I'm going to water it down a little bit to paint on top of those highlights that I did in white before. With this, the flesh is done, the skin on this Imperial Troop is finished. And with Orc Flesh, I'm going to paint on top of the areas that I painted before with Mortarian Green. A final highlight with Gehenna's Gold, I paint the eyes and we are going to move on now on to how to do the bases. This is the system that I use for my Hero Quest miniatures, the ones that you saw before, and also for all the other Imperial troops here. I'm just repeating it for sake of consistency if you are not going to watch those videos, which by the way you can see here. The process is very simple. Start with a grey coat of Drakenhof Nightshade or any color that you want. Start painting flagstones with a cream color such as Ushaptibone and then highlight the areas around those stones as you can see with pure white, paint a few details and finish it off with Abaddon Black painting in between the flagstones, drawing some cracks here and there and I paint also the sides of the base. In order to get these colors tied all together much better, I give a last coat, it's not exactly a coat, it's a little bit of dabbing here and there with Agrax Earthshade and with this I have my stone dungeon bases like so. And thus the first of the Dark Company soldiers is finished and we can move on to the next one while he tries to help out his buddy 
down in the dungeon. Please remember that in order to support these kind of videos, the best way that you can do it, and it's free by the way, is just liking it, subscribing to the channel, activating notifications, and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. I really appreciate that. Thank you a lot. The next trooper hails from Aldorf, the seat of the Emperor Karl Franz and nowadays the capital of the empire. The combination of colors in this miniature make it a very striking and very interesting color scheme with both a deep blue, which is achieved by painting the uniform with ultramarines blue, and then a deep crimson red, which is obtained by painting the rest of the miniature with flesh terrors red. I should have painted this part of the armor with silver, I'm doing it now with iron breakers. And I also thought, well, the shield should more or less look like the miniature, so I'm gonna do that afterwards, I'm gonna paint it with the same colors that I did now. The armor, I'm gonna paint it with known oil, and in the meantime, while this is drying, I'm gonna fix the shield, as I said, and then I'm going to use Seraphine Sepia to paint all the metallic parts of the miniature, plus the leather shoes, the belt, the pouch, and also the back of the shield, which is going to be painted more or less like wood. Yand in yellow, I'm going to paint the ribbons and also I'm going to paint the shield emblem that looks like a lion. As you can see, I'm trying a different type of yellow here. Anything that I'm doing with the troops now, you can try to do yourself. If you don't have all the colors that I have, please be free to try all the combinations. Snake by leather is going to be used to paint all the leather parts in the miniature, such as this small pouch that is carrying and also to paint the grain of the wood behind the shield. I'm shading a little bit the gold parts, the yellow parts, and also some parts in the face. And because of the shading, I want to recover some color in the yellow ribbons and the emblem of the shield, so it looks much cleaner, the way an Aldorfian soldier will look like. Painting flesh is usually a tricky affair, but don't worry, it is quite easy to do it with contrast colors. The idea is that you need to water them down to a consistency that allows you to paint without being too strong. For this flesh, once again I'm gonna highlight it very carefully with watered down paints. I try to get it to the consistency where it's still going to cover enough but it's not too opaque and therefore you can still see the color beneath. I'm still using the white because I want to highlight certain areas such as the emblem, the sigil that the shield has, this lion and also the ribbons, the plume, and the socks that I painted before with Grief Charger Grey. Gilliman Flesh is going to kill those very strong highlights by watering it down once again and it's better to give a couple of coats with watered down contrast paints than giving one thick one that is going to kill all the details. I'm going to highlight the armor as usual with iron breaker. Make sure that the sword looks sharp by just painting the edges and the middle of the blade and leaving a little bit of that patina or rust that makes the armor look much more realistic than if it was too shiny. Same process for Gehenna's gold on that small symbol on the forehead 
and also on the sword handle and pommel. Highlighting those small cuts in the pants in white and then painting with the opposite color in the uniform, in this case red, makes it look much nicer. A couple of final details go into the face, because it's the focal point of the miniature. Water down a little bit of Grief Charger Grey, paint that stubble by painting the cheeks and the chin of the miniature, and then water down Angram Red, the air color that I use for the cuts in the pants, you can use to give an extra layer of color to the cheeks. The face will look rugged with the stubble, and the warrior will be ready to go down to the dungeon to help his partner, the elf. I was quite surprised to see Oslan as one of the front runners for the votes on how to paint the uniform because it's quite bland actually, it's just black and white, there is nothing interesting about it, so I decided to spice it up a little bit with some extra details. I'm gonna start painting, in this case the flesh first, I'm using for this Gilliman flesh and we are going to use this wash as well to paint the gold to give it a patina. With non oil, I'm going to paint the armor and those parts of the uniform that are going to be black later. I'm also painting the small cuts in the other side of the pants that will be white, just to save some time on that. But this is very straightforward process. Paint the silver metals with non oil and paint the parts of the uniform that will be black with non oil as well. For the white side, we're gonna use contrast apothecary white, which is gonna give it this grey, light grey uh, color, which we're gonna highlight later on with pure white. experimenting with different ways of painting armor with the two previous miniatures and this one is not going to be any different. The skeleton horde is going to be used to shade not only the leather shoes and the belts and buckles and all the leather things that this miniature has but also the sword and the armor itself. I'm going to use this same color also to do a different color scheme on the flesh just to see what else can I achieve with different techniques, different mixtures, different whatever and cardboard crimson is going to be the color of choice now to paint purple uh, these several ribbons that he has and also this interesting pattern that i'm gonna do on the headband for the helmet Grayish black is boring, so I'm gonna use Leviathan, which is a very dark blue paint on top of the known oil, in order to achieve this very dark blue color that almost reads as black. Gore Grunt of Fur is going to be used to paint the leather shoes, the pouch, the belt, etc. etc. And this is because this color is a very rich reddish brown and it's gonna contrast very well with the otherwise quite nude palette of this miniature. We're gonna further improve the tonality of the purple by using Magus Purple and we're gonna paint all those ribbons that we painted before with Cardboard Crimson. The best color for contrasting against purple is yellow because they are complementary colors, they are opposite in the wheel and they look very striking together. As I said, the uniform of this state is not very striking so I decided to include a few more colors to make it, you know, more landskinet like Speaking of landskinets, what better weapon for one than a Zweihander sword, like in this case. So Blood Angels Red for the handle of that big ass sword and also for a couple of stripes on the plume to even it out, make it more interesting as usual. Druche Violet, just one more touch up for both the red and those purple stripes and ribbons and having it a little bit dilute I'm gonna paint the lower bottom of the cheeks on the face 
just to make sure that we have that extra pop. We're gonna highlight, clean up the yellow parts on the headband and the ribbons and the socks with flask it's yellow and after we're done with this we have a very interesting very strong contrasting colors all over the place but i think we need an extra layer of highlights and that's where we're gonna use white i'm cleaning again a little bit and making a few last highlights with pure white very careful here i don't want to overdo it the trick here is not to let yourself get carried away by highlighting sometimes less is more and if you actually do highlight way too much or if you make a mistake try to glaze a little bit with a similar color to the one that you were highlighting from like in this case my handle i think is too white too pasty so i go with angry red and make sure that i mute that down cheekbones in the face and after seeing one of the comments that somebody left uh, after showing two of the previous miniatures that they thought that these miniatures had a strong overbite or either it was a moustache I decided that this guy should have one pure Abaddon black and I paint that over there just a final highlights for the armor and this guy is basically done This guy is the one that I enjoy painting the most and it's not because the paint job is very complex, not at all, it's actually quite the opposite, it is very simple but those small details such as the ribbons and the headband and the plume and the combination of colors I think it made it look much much better than it actually should look because it's a very simple miniature, as I said it's just black and white uniform but yeah, the yellow details, the purple details, and that red handle, and the red small stripes on the plume make it look much better. So this guy is gonna go help the Barbarian deal with the Gargoyle and those Chaos Warriors. And then we're gonna move to the last one of these Imperial Soldiers. I have a whole Imperial army painted with the Sterling colors, and the reason for that is because I live in Romania. My previous army had been Vampire Counts. And because Transylvania is part of Romania and Sylvania is part of Stirland, well, I thought that it would be a good idea to paint this province as part of my armies. I'm gonna challenge myself a little bit. I'm not gonna use any of the normal contrast colors, but I'm gonna use Vallejo and air colors from Citadel. And that's what I'm gonna use to paint this guy. I'm not gonna use any of the contrast or any of the normal washes and the idea is that you know sometimes when you paint things you just need to see okay how can I do this with some limitations and by doing so this is how I'm gonna tackle this sterling guy so first of all flesh wash from Vallejo for the flesh bits and then black wash to paint the armor while this was drying I was thinking a little bit about the color scheme and I was saying yeah those feet are cow shoes, cow mouth shoes, but Sterling is a poor province in the Empire in Warhammer Fantasy, so I decided to paint those with flesh, so they look like feet. I'm gonna use now the Vallejo wash sepia to paint the armor to make it look a little bit more rusty. As you can see it's brownish, it's very similar to the sepia wash from Citadel, but I don't know, it looks a little bit different. I painted both the crossbow and the armor with that and then I use Sigismund yellow to paint the different parts of the uniform that are gonna be yellow. Sterling has a green and yellow uniform usually, quite dirty if you check the book and I wanted to paint the green with Vallejo green wash which is quite pale compared to anything that contrast range has. While the green wash is going to be drying, I'm gonna use Vallejo Red Wash to paint the ribbons in this miniature. I just skip that step. But everything dried now and the paleness on the green sides of the uniform was not 
very much of my liking. I really like vivid colors, but I wanted to make it sure that it was not too dark, too deep, too strong. So I used Mortarion Air Color to do that. With pure white, I'm going not only to highlight the areas that I wanted to make sure that they are clean or highlighted, I also painted the grain on the crossbow and I made sure that the flesh was ready for the next step later on. I also painted the eyes now, just changing the steps and the ribbons that I painted before with the red wash from Vallejo, I now painted with Angron Red, which is going to make this pop a little bit more. Pale Grey from Gang Wash, another one of those washes I'm gonna use to paint kind of like a stubble on the face and also on the plume to make sure that it, there is some shading. Then I'm gonna use this Umber Wash to paint on the leather, the pouch, and also the wood of the crossbow. And later on, I'm gonna use Eidolon Purple, which is another air color to give an extra layer of shading on the ribbons that are red and also in a few places here and there on the flesh such as the lips and under the cheekbones. With calf blue clear I'm going to give a couple of details here. First of all I'm going to paint the feathers on the bolt, the last segment of the plume to make it look a little bit more interesting than just pure white and very watered down. I'm gonna use it as a glaze on top of a stubble that I painted before so it looks more vivid, more alive. I had promised myself I was not going to use any of the contrast colors, so I needed to use something from the air range. Death Shroud Clear, which is a black wash, actually works very well for this. I'm going to darken further some areas of the armor, such as the chain mail and also the plume to make it look more interesting. It is very, very pale in comparison to what it usually is. And with Sigismund Clear, Remember, just paint those areas in those cuts with pure white and then just give it a color from the other side of the uniform and this will be it. There you go, this guy is almost finished. A few details here and there, painting the armor back with the original color, which is Iron Breakers. Making sure that it looks rusty because this is a Steerlander and their armor is not gonna be as well kept as usual. And now I just get black and water it down to the consistency of almost a watercolor so it flows easily from the brush because what I'm going to do now is with my very bad pulse as you can see is try to paint the pupil of this small eye slit that I have right there beneath the helmet. Final highlights with pure white, making sure that everything is the way it should be. Very carefully highlighting the ribbons, the plume. Yes, finishing touches. This guy is done and is ready to go down to the dungeon to help out the wizard with that femur that is sneaking behind him. Sterlander, there you go. So if you are still collecting these guys from yesteryear, if you are still using them for your games of Age of Sigmar, you probably can gather a lot of things out of this video. You can use any colors that I painted here in the way that I painted them to implement those for your middle hammer armies, your late hammer armies, your Age of Sigmar, Cities of Sigmar armies, anything as you want. The red, blues, yellows, greens, blacks, whatever, you have many ways of combining them and that's fine by me. My name is Miguel, thank you for watching the video. Make sure that you subscribe and you activate the notifications because that way you help the channel tremendously. And you know what? It's free. Thank you, un beso y adios.